So if the worst does happen and you do lose your job, what can you actually do? And is there anything you could do to prevent this happening in the first place? Here are all my tips that I think you definitely need to hear. Check it out. We're going to talk about Meta today um, and what they've done with their UK office. And we're going to use that as a way to frame the discussion on basically how you should prepare if the economy goes bad. And I know that sounds like quite a grim topic. Um, and I know, I, you know, I'm not here to sort of spread doom and sort of say, oh, we're all screwed and all that sort of thing. I'm really not. Um, however, I do think it's very likely that we're going to see a recession over the next 12 to 18 months. I also think it's going to be potentially a tricky time for some people. And so what I thought I would do is I would create a video to essentially give you guys support on some things you can do just to kind of try and protect yourself, especially if you're on the younger side of things, especially if you're the more junior end, because there are things you can do. Um, and I know when things go bad, often people just get let go and they don't really have a plan. And so what I thought I would do is I would give you a few kind of key pieces of advice. Um, as ever, you do not have to take them. Um, in fact, I would almost always say take, you know, think about everything I say, right? Because, you know, no one's always right. Um, I'm certainly not. Um, so it's worth thinking about, but I'm going to get into it. So like I said, the context of this is Facebook paying £149 million to surrender the lease on their London office block. Now, this kind of tells me two things. One is, how different the work from home policy is now because Facebook got this office I think in 2017 when obviously working in the office full time was very much part and parcel um, but they've literally spent 149 million um, pounds not to have an office that's how kind of wild this sort of whole way from home and it, they kind of quote two things really one is <clears throat> work from home like I said which is about 30 percent and the second is the fact that they've had to let a lot of people go. And like I said, I'm not sort of singling out Facebook. Here. I'm just saying a lot of tech companies have let people go. People have started to tighten belts with inflation starting to come down. Basically, I, I think, like I said, we're very likely heading for a tough 12 to 18 months. Um, I really do. And however, in all those sort of things, I'm not here just to be like, firstly, I'm not going to be like, and that's the best opportunity for you to make money because that's just nonsense because a lot of people get hit hard because the economy is bad. But two, there are things that you can do to protect yourself. And that's what I want to talk to you all about today. So tip number one is read up on your legals. And what I mean by that is check your contract and find out how much your notice period is, and also, you know, how long you've been there, work out what your redundancy pay might be as well. So if you were to be let go, and again, I'm not saying you will be, I'm not saying everyone's going to be, I'm not trying to start a mass panic at all. But I do think people often get let go suddenly, and these are just good tips to kind of stay on top of, really. So check your notice period, see how long you've, um, you know, you would be paid for, basically, um, how much time you'd have to find a new job. So often it's about two months, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's more, but sometimes it is less. And especially if you're recently joined, you have a probation period, your notice period is often less for a probation period. So that's a really important point to bear in mind. Um, but check that and work out how's it doing. The second is just find out how the company is doing. You know, speak to your manager, speak to your boss, and just ask honestly, you know, how's the business doing? Are we doing well? Are we struggling? I like, ask for financial updates, you know, most people will give you this information. You know, if anyone asks me how my company does, I always tell them and be sort of very upfront in regards to the numbers. Um, and I think that's important. I mean, I think a business that is transparent with how a company is honestly doing is important because you can kind of go on the journey together. You can say, right, you know, this is going well, but also this, you know, the here is where we're struggling. We need to sort of work together. So ask. It's okay to ask how the company's doing and are you worried about the next couple of years and all that sort of thing and what the risks are. And it can be really useful information for you to get. Thirdly, Think about the business you are in and then paint the picture of the economy struggling. So basically, do you work for a company that provides something you kind of consider a necessity? So, you know, things that people always pay, like a mobile company or a uh, water company or electricity or do you see what I mean? Like things that people kind of the necessities, you know, or do you kind of provide something that's a bit more of a luxury that people make up? By? Now, again, I am not saying people touch. But I mean, the best example of luxuries going up is during lockdown, loads of luxury like pajama companies did really well, right? Because, um, you know, everyone thought, well, I was, if I'm going to spend money on clothes, I might be wearing nice lounge wear that I'm sort of, because I'm in stuck indoors all day. So there's always an opportunity, right? So there's no, there's no sort of like golden rule of this company as well, this company does badly. But have a think and be honest with yourself about whether you think what your company does is a necessary or luxury. And if you, if the economy was to struggle, is the, the sort of service that people might start to cut back or is it the service actually people really need or actually spend more on? Now, the next one's an interesting one, right? And this is a weird one, but have a think. If your manager was told they had to get rid of two people in your team or a third of the team or something like that, have a think about who, whether you are at risk for doing that. Now, I am not saying if you are at risk, you're one of the worst team members, or if you're not, you're one of the best at all, because 
that would be a good way to do it. But actually, that's just not how it does because people have favourites, people have nepotism, you know, all that sort of stuff. So think about all the different factors and then ask yourself honestly, if my manager was told they had to let go 20% of their team, do you think, oh, because managers will pick the people they like or they think are the best. They will. Um, So have a really honest conversation with yourself about that. And then, you know, see where that sets you, because it might be that you're just completely indispensable and you think, right, actually, I think I'm OK because literally the business will ground to a halt because I'm doing so much. Or you might say, oh, actually, look, we've hired a couple of people. We're probably a little bit overstaffed. You know, do you see what I mean? So it's a really interesting conversation. Again, I know this is quite a bleak video and I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen, but it is important to think about it and think about the possibilities of what might happen and, and sort of help yourself out there a little bit as well. So next is start thinking about your savings and finance. I don't mean that in a patronising way. I mean legitimately start thinking of having a plan and start thinking about a budget and basically just say, right, because what happens if you get ready to run, you can go into a bit of shock and it can be quite stressful. I mean, it is quite stressful. It very much is. And so have a think about, right, if I have to cut back, what would I cut back? And have a plan of what you can realistically cut back and sort of base it around there because it's good to have that because then you can just implement it and you don't have to do all that whilst you're stressing out about finding a new job. It's never a bad time to update your CV, update your references and start thinking about what you might or might not want to do um, because you want to get ahead of it, right? If you get like you want to kind of get on it straight away because a lot of if people get let go because of the economy, a lot of people get let go and the job market's flooded and it becomes a real um, uh, job driven market. So have a think about your CV, get it all in order, get every sort of building blocks in place and really have a think about what you might want to do next if you were to be let go. Now, the next one is, I look, if you're in a terrible position and a terrible job, of course you should move. I'm not saying you don't move. However, there is something called a first in, first out system where if you move a job recently and then the company decides to make redundancies, you are at risk, much greater risk than if you've been there three, four, five years. Um, and the main reason for that is, one, people don't know you as well, so you haven't had time to build that rapport. And two, it's actually much more expensive to get rid of a long-standing employee, which is quite right, by the way, because you have something called redundancy pay. And so often people tend to kind of get rid of the people who've just joined. So... When you are moving job, have a real think about who you're moving to and run all these exercises by because the closer you move job to a time when economic turmoil happens, the more likely it is that we're going to struggle. Um, And so, and then finally, just ask your boss, just ask your boss to be really upfront and say, look, I'll, you know, because it, it, you'd be amazed at how often they come back and say, look, um, you know, we should be fine or actually, you know, between you and me, I think things are going to, et cetera, because You'll be surprised how honest people are. Um, so yeah, like I said, those are kind of my main tips for what you can start thinking about. Again, look, I know this sounds like the most depressing video ever, which is very on brand for if you ever check my socials out, but I'm not here to freak you out. I'm really not. I just really want to sort of help people prepare if the worst does happen, which obviously I hope doesn't, but there's a chance, you know, if the economy goes down, inevitably some companies do let people go and there will be people who are struggling. So I hope um, you understand why I made this video and um, I hope it helps. Um, I hope people don't feel like it's too patronising because it really isn't intended to be. Um, but as ever, if you have any questions or anything like that, please drop them in the comments. Um, but yeah, otherwise...